Hi, this is Komal. Today we'll talk about how to download um, uh, Anaconda and uh, run a simple Hello World program in Python using Anaconda. So the first thing uh, you're going to do is uh, go ahead and in your browser and type Anaconda. On the top of the your search list, you will see download Anaconda. Now go to that link and then choose your operating system, Windows, Mac, or Linux. You will see each of them has uh, two Python versions, 3.6 or 2.7. Uh, you can go ahead with the latest one, 3.6, and choose the 32 uh, bit or 64, depending on what is your machine configuration is. I go ahead and just choose 64 bit, and then you can just run it. I already have it, so I'm leaving it here. So you can go ahead and run it, so it'll see on your machine. Once your download is complete, uh, and you run the run the program, go ahead and type Anaconda on your uh, search uh, in your Windows machine. Go to the Anaconda Navigator. It's taking a moment to upload, updating this uh, Anaconda. Yes, uh, once you see this, you will have a uh, lot of applications in a particular environment. Uh, currently, I'm running on root environment. You can go ahead and create your own new environment where you will see a uh, lot of uh, these libraries have been installed already. You will always, you can also see uh, what are other libraries which are not installed so if you have an application that requires these libraries go ahead and install it as you need so let's go back home uh, you can see on which environment I am I am on root you will see a bunch of, of tools that are available on this application so what we are interested in today is on Jupyter Notebook uh, which is a Python web based interactive uh, environment where you can type Python comments and uh, and see the output um, as you run the uh, cells in the Jupyter Notebook let's go ahead and launch this so what's pretty much the uh, Anaconda does is it runs a server uh, back and then it will throw a client machine uh, client uh, on you as a web browser in the web browser so you will see the server is running on localhost all eight and then it will show it will listing all the contents of the particular folder where the server is running so if you want to go ahead and create a new uh, new notebook for yourself so go to this new and then choose python 3 so once you have python 3 you will see a, a first cell uh, thrown up for you so the cell is nothing but uh, um, a particular block where you it will execute a list of uh, instructions given in python so you can go ahead and do shift enter so that it will create a new cell so the cell could have three types uh, the cell could have contain a code or a markdown text which is nothing but your H a kind of uh, html text and then a raw and we convert mostly we will be using code and markdown to, to write code and explain what the code does using markdown let's take a simple example and how see how it will run so let's go ahead and type hello world so this is pretty much like an interpreter whatever you write it goes back to you let's take you create a way if you want to see a map, something like a calculator 2 plus 3 python access calculator so 2 into 3 so just what I'm doing is uh, go ahead and uh, uh, type the uh, instruction that you want um, and then go and do shift plus enter it will give you the output so if you have a, a, a complex computation where you want to declare your variables go ahead and do that uh, if it's your preferred variable let's say we want to compute uh, 2 pi r square so define your pi as 3.14 and then say area equal to 2 into pi into let's say radius of r equal to 4 so 2 into pi into r into r and then just shift enter so you might wonder why we have not seen any output here so just go ahead and type area variable name or whatever the variable has the contents it will throw you back so you, uh, this is all through integers let's say uh, simple I w if you want to overwrite the area uh, as a string like this you can overwrite so the interesting thing if you observe is you can overwrite the variables because unlike C or any other compiled languages the interpreter languages doesn't care about what kind of data type the variable is holding 
and see if you do something similar like if you define an integer as an a float variable area as a float variable you cannot overwrite it to a string but in the interpreter languages this is not the case you can simply overwrite with a variable name now after this particular point anytime you type that variable you will always see a string and, um, uh, type so you can see something like type of the variable name the variable could not be a simple variable it could be a complex variable as a class so so but if you see something like pi it will throw you a float but if you see an r it will be an int so that's how you can define your variables in python and then make it a work it like an interpreter so next time we will try to write a simple program and see the program would be something like uh, finding a median in a given array okay um, that's for today from me and have a great day bye